again, it's Cliff here from Down Under. In this video, I'm going to make a squareness comparator. A squareness comparator that you can use to etch accurately measure your squares, your vices, your angle plates, and not just see whether or not they're square, but see how square they are, how close to 90 degrees they are. So I'll go into how to make the squareness comparator base and use your dial indicator and stand as a nice little CNC project, you might be interested yourself in making this. And then I'll go into using it and into the metrology of how you can accurately measure the 90 degrees. And also go into, uh, while I'm at the making stage, um, how you can use blunt, tired carbide cutters and refurbish them into reflex cutters or corner rounding cutters and also into radius cutters. And I'll use those old blunt cutters to machine this part out of pre-hardened steel on my Tormac 1100. Um, I'll also go into a bit of World War II history, and that'll probably be in the second part of the video, or a part two, for those of you who are interested in the details of it all. All right, cheers. Well, first off, let's talk about how the squareness comparator works for those of you who are unfamiliar with it. So traditionally, I used to check if something was square by using a reference square, put it up against it, look through and look at the light and see how much, how square it was. You know, if there's a triangle of light, you know, it's not very square. The problem with that is you don't know how much out of square it is. Is it one thou out? Is it quarter of a thou out or is it three thou out? You, don't, you just don't really know. And also, you don't know whether your square, your reference square, is right either. It could have been knocked. It might never have been that accurate from you. Well, a squareness comparator gets around both of those problems. And that's why it's so fantastic and why I've always wanted to make one. Um, so the way it works is the leading edge, this curved edge, comes in contact with the surface you want to measure. The base is in contact with your flat surface that you're working off and the dial indicator is set to the angle. So you contact it on that curved surface, roll it round and set the dial indicator onto zero or onto a number. Now I think it's better to set it onto a number than zero because with zero, you're never quite sure which side of the zero you are. You know, you might be minus one on one side, minus and plus one on the other, and you might get confused about that. But with a number, you can easily see, well, you're nine on one side and 11 on the other. So, okay, so I've set it to a number 10, 10 hundredths of a millimeter. Now what that is, is a right angle between this surface and this vertical plane contacting on the high point of that radius and the number 10 of the dial indicator. So we can now repeatedly measure. And the secret to this is you can do it repeatedly. If you can do something repeatedly, it's a very useful measuring instrument. So that's how you measure and it'll tell you how much out it is. If it's three hundredths of a millimeter out, then you have a specific measurement of out of squareness. And that is really useful. Now, the, the, I can see some of you are thinking, but, but how do you know your angle plate is right in the first place? How do you know you've got that 
set at exactly 90 degrees. Well, this is where the real beauty of it comes in. There's a process you can use to generate a right angle. If you have two parallel faces, for example, on a parallel or on the sides of an angle plate, that is parallel. You can, if you can measure it with a micrometer and ascertain that it is quite accurately parallel, then you can measure one side, turn it round, and measure the other side. Now, knowing that it's parallel must mean that if you get zero or one on both sides, it's exactly 90 degrees and your comparator is set right. But if it isn't at 90 degrees, you can split the difference and you can set it to 11 on one side and 9 on the other and that way you know that 10 in the middle is exactly 90 degrees. So you're using a generating process with a parallel to set your comparator at 90 degrees. Then when you want to come and check your square and let's do it this way so we can come in now and we can check our square and we can get a definitive measurement that says Wow, that square I've had all these years is actually a thou out. It's a thou acute or a thou obtuse. So this is a very useful measuring instrument. So I'm going to set the work origin in the middle of this block. And so this particular probing routine, find rectangular boss center, find center set work origin is really good. It just does a quick traverse around the block the software works out the size of the block and then it does the uh, four cri critical probes to find the exact center. I'll just do that now. Now we're in the middle of the block with the XY coordinates set and I'll just set the Z, probe Z set work origin. Now we're all set up. So this cutter was an old blunt cutter and I just manually ground uh, little radiuses on the ends where it was worn away to turn it back into a sharp cutter, about a 1.5 millimeter radius. And I'm going to use a TTS shank that has got a plug in the end. I mentioned this in the videos in the video series uh, R8 TTS or BT30 and I did a test to show that this holds more securely. Um, the R8 collet pulling the TTS up grips more securely than it does on a hollow sleeve type shank um, and it will hold it more firmly and be less likely to come out under heavy machining in steel. So if you've got an old cutter that's a bit blunt, um, that tends to be on the last couple of millimeters, you can re-grind it um, into a radius cutter with a, a diamond wheel and um, it's a very useful roughing cutter. It cuts really well with a radius on the end. It um, produces a better direction of cutting pressure for roughing work and also you can use it for cutting radiuses. So you use your diamond wheel. I'm just simulating it here with the old blunt cutter now, with an old blunt cutter. So set it up on the right angle. Too much of an angle, you'll have too much rake and you'll touch the next edge round. But just the right, just, just a little bit of clearance and then just roll it round. Turn it around to the next one, set it up again and roll it round. And you'll find with a bit of practice it's not too difficult to grind a nice sharp radius on an old tired cutter. Just a health and safety note here if you're grinding with diamond and you're grinding uh, tungsten carbide it's not good to breathe in the fine dust that comes off it so either wear a face mask or if you're just grinding for a few seconds just fill your lungs up with air somewhere else come in and do the grinding but don't breathe for those few seconds well that's what I do if it's just a quick touch up anyway.
Well, we're getting ready now to try it out. I'm looking forward to testing a few things to see how square they are. Um, as regards to the metal choice and the heat treatment type, usually it's regarded as best practice to harden and grind and lap these types of gauges. But often that's done without any thought to what is the real wear and application requirements. I mean, on the underneath, you've got this surface here, which will gradually wear, sliding it on your granite or cast iron uh, surface plate. And you've got this uh, leading ledge, the contact ledge surface, that curved surface, which uh, could eventually wear little flats on it. And if you make this out of just mild steel, it will wear more quickly than this pre-hardened steel. But a fully hardened steel at 60 odd rock will see will last longer. But you've got to ask the question, how often are you going to use it? You may only use it once a month um, and realistically the wear on even mild steel will be minimum. And even if it does wear, the flat surface running on the granite is going to stay flat and in contact. It's really just lapping itself down. And this curved surface on the front can be redressed if you get an angle plate, here we have an angle plate, on a, on a plate or on a machine table, and you put some wet and dry paper on there, which I've just been doing, you can lap or, or, or surface that contact ledge. Probably can't see me there very well. Yeah, that's a bit better. So you're getting a nice right angle lapping surface there and you can put about a three or four hundred grit wet and dry to start with to get the milling marks off it and then you could go up to a 600 or an 800 or a thousand and get a beautiful surface there on that leading edge. Now if you find after you be, if you use this a lot and you get a little flat on it then you can sh just repolish it again and get it back to new. It's, uh, not a specific radius, it just needs to be a smooth surface. Well, on the subject of the base, I thought about this for a while. I took my cues from Mitutoyo. Um, there's some real advantages in having a flat surface hollowed out in the middle like this, because uh, while in theory a three-point a three-point contact three feet on the bottom is best in theory, three little hardened pads that are glass hard and lap. There's disadvantages with that as well. Uh, that's going to be harder on the surface plate because you've got high pressure local points of contact. That's not good for the surface plate. And also, um, if you want to use it off the surface plate, if you want to use this base on a machine tool uh, or on a die or on a uh, an angle plate or on a vise off the surface plate, you don't want three feet on the bottom snagging on holes and T-slots and things. This design will much better bridge any little gaps in the surface you're sliding over. Well stage one is just to make the squareness comparator base because you can use it perfectly well by just adding on a magnetic dial indicator stand. Um, now longer term if I want to I could make uh, a really nice elegant custom designed uh, stand and uh, dial indicator clamp system you know but that's quite a bit of work and in practice this this is adequate. Um, so long term I may do that though. Well thanks for watching guys. Well that was a bit of an overview in the next video, I think it'd be best, I'll go more deeply into uh, the squareness comparator, how to make it, some tips and trips, tricks along the way, how to uh, grind your own reflex cutter or corner rounding cutter, a bit of history, and I'll go more deeply into the metrology of it. Cheers. Mm -hmm.